Since the birth of astronomy and the discovery of other planets in space, mankind has always wondered what it would be like to actually land on these celestial bodies. After all, exploring such an alien environment would not only teach us a lot about these harsh worlds, it would also increase the chances of securing a much brighter future for humanity as a whole. But before we dream such magnificent dreams, how do we even land on another planet in the first place? This is the question which has perplexed most scientists to a major degree, even in the case of our closest celestial relative, Mars. However, the scientists in SpaceX have made a multi-step game plan in order to make this fantasy a reality. So join us as we talk about how SpaceX will pull off the landing on our red neighbor, Mars. Gravity and how it works. Gravity is explained as the force which attracts objects towards the center of the Earth or any other physical body which has a large amount of mass. Albert Einstein explains gravity beautifully. In his theory of gravity, it is explained that space itself is like a stretched sheet of fabric. Now, any object placed on this sheet of fabric leaves a dent on it. If a heavier object, meaning object with greater mass, is placed on that sheet, the dent formed by it would be much deeper. Similarly, an object with lesser mass will have a much shallower dent. This can simply be done at your home as well. Go ahead and try it with any two spherical objects. Now, objects with huge amounts of mass, like planets and the sun, leave such a huge dent on the fabric that this forms what we call a gravity well. Here, any object that comes within the range of this gravity well gets sucked closer towards that planet. Understood? Great. This concept of gravity will be essential in order to understand taking off and especially landing. Delta V. Now, keeping in mind the concept of gravity, let's discuss another factor called delta V. It does not take a rocket scientist to understand the fact that our Earth is constantly orbiting around the Sun. And just like Earth, so is Mars. The orbital speed of the Earth is 30 kilometers per second, and the only thing which holds us from dropping even deeper into the massive gravity well of the Sun is this orbital speed. Now, similarly, Mars is also orbiting with a fixed speed, which is 24 kilometer per second. The reason why it is stable with a much lesser speed is because it is much higher than Earth in the gravity well of our Sun. Now, in order to escape the surface of our home planet Earth, we would need a huge amount of upthrust, but that would not be the only problem. You see, after leaving the gravitational force of our blue home, we would become just another object stuck in the gravity well of our Sun. And if our orbital speed decreases below 30 kilometers per second, well, then we would be hurtling towards the Sun forcefully being pulled into its gravity well. In order to escape such a gruesome fate, we would need to speed up our spaceship more than 30 kilometers per second, slowly climbing up towards our planned destination, Mars. So in order to travel through space, the key component we need to understand is this change in our velocity relative to our starting position. This change in velocity is called delta V. Now, as we discussed this earlier, we are moving at the speed of 30 kilometers per second on our blue planet, but if we were to travel in a rocket ship at the speed of 31 km per second, this would mean we are moving with a delta V of 1. Similarly, if we were to travel at a speed of 29 km per second, this would still mean we are moving with a delta V of 1, because it refers to the change in velocity. Launch of Starship Taking into consideration the natural forces such as atmospheric drag and gravity, the amount of delta V needed would be 9.4 kilometers per second. This monumental amount of force required to push through and reach low Earth orbit is why it is extremely difficult to take off in the first place. This much amount of acceleration would need just as much amount of fuel and muscle from the rockets. And this is why the upthrust of our super heavy booster would be absolutely essential. Once up in Earth's orbit, starships would need to stop for refueling as a lot more muscle power, meaning propulsion would be needed for much greater delta V. Now, from this set point in our orbit, we would need another 9.5 km per second of delta V in order to reach the surface of our destination planet Mars. Overarching concept. Okay, so we have completed phase one, the launch of Starship. Let's take a little detour and consider how it would travel towards our intended goal and land on the surface of Mars. Now, a full Starship in lower Earth orbit is considered to have enough thrust for somewhere between 6 to 7 km per second of delta V. So we have reached a problem here. This would be much lesser than our desired amount, which we discussed earlier at 9.5 km per second. You might be asking, in that case, how would we even reach the planet Mars? It's simple. Remember the forces we talked about earlier, which made it so excruciatingly hard for us to escape Earth? We are going to use those exact forces in our favor at this time. 
This means that we just need enough delta V to come in contact with the gravitational field of Mars and let those natural forces do the work for us, therefore increasing the delta V potential of our starship. Departure from Earth. Okay, so left off when our starship was orbiting around the Earth. If we are to decelerate, then we might fall back onto the surface of the Earth. And on the opposite end of this scenario, if we are to accelerate, then we would rise much higher from the surface of Earth. Now, since we are still very close to the surface of Earth, we would need a lot more delta V in order to effectively escape Earth's gravity. From the low Earth orbit, we would need around three kilometers per second of delta V in order to reach lunar altitude orbit, meaning the height of the moon. Here, we would finally be at the edge of Earth's gravity well. Now, all we would need is an increase of 0 0.09 kilometer per second in delta V, and we would be completely free from Earth's gravitational forces and completely spacebound. Here, far away from Earth and the Moon, we would need only 0 0.39 meter per second of delta V to successfully reach the transfer velocity needed to travel from Earth to Mars through the vast emptiness of space. The departure from Earth, as well as traveling through space to reach planet Mars, has used up around 3.6 km per second of the total delta V, which is half the amount of delta V a fully fueled starship has, as we discussed earlier. The landing principle. We started off with the orbital speed of the Earth, which was 30 km per second, and after speeding up even more, we need to slow down to the orbital speed of Mars at around 24 km per second. If this maneuver is not executed correctly, we will end up missing Mars entirely and shoot past it into the asteroid belt. Let's understand the principle of landing on Mars and the problems accompanying it. After several months of travel, we need to start the process of deceleration. Our first deceleration burn starts off as we begin to come close to the gravity well of Mars. Now the Starship must flip itself over and align the engines perpendicular to the landing surface and begin to decelerate. Here we must cut off 0.67 km per second of delta V so we could get pulled into the gravity well of Mars. After being successfully caught by the gravitational forces of Mars, we must now burn off 0.34 km per second more of our delta V to reach the moon Deimos. 0.4 km per second more, and we move to the inner moon of Mars, Phobos. And this is the point where we run into another problem. You see, by now we have used up around 5 km per second of our delta V, meaning we are only left with one or two more in the tank whereas the amount necessary to make a soft landing on Mars at this point is around 4.5 km per second of delta V. However, this does not mean that landing on Mars would be impossible. We still can achieve that, but we have to be extremely strategic regarding fuel conservation. Touchdown on Mars. Now, this is the most logistically possible way of landing on Mars. I do have to remind you that this is all purely theoretical. In order to save as much fuel as possible, we must use as much external forces available in order to slow the velocity of our starship and land safely on the surface of Mars. Hypothetically speaking, lowering our spaceship in a circular motion onto the surface of Mars will consume tons of our precious fuel. But what if we use an elliptical orbit instead? Here we can conserve a good amount of fuel. The orbit around the planet Mars would be in an oval shape with its low spot or perigee near the planet and a high spot apogee far away into space. Using this specific maneuver, we might be able to use the aerodynamic drag as well as the gravitational force of Mars instead of our precious delta V to make a soft touchdown. Now, the idea is that although the atmosphere of Mars is very thin, it would supply us with some atmospheric drag and decrease the velocity by a small amount before we get flung out to the apogee. Here, the gravity of Mars would hopefully pull us back if executed properly to repeat this process until we have decreased our velocity enough. However, this cannot be continued over and over again. We do have to transition from these dips into the atmosphere into a full-on dive onto the surface of Mars. Here, on its final approach, the Starship will enter the atmosphere of Mars upside with its nose towards the surface. This way, the lift created would be helpful in slowing down the spaceship. Next, we would see the traditional belly flop maneuver as seen on Earth. All of these actions taken will make sure we have maximum amount of drag, but this will only be helpful until we hit terminal velocity. Due to the much thinner atmosphere on Mars, the terminal velocity would be five times faster than Earth, meaning it would still require a lot more engine power on Mars to land softly than it is required on Earth. And on the moment of touchdown, hopefully we would have enough fuel left in the tank to provide us with the right amount of Delta V to decelerate more land safely. That is a long list of events that absolutely need to be perfectly executed 
in order to successfully reach the surface. Now, this task seems extremely difficult, if not impossible, but SpaceX is currently working harder to make their spaceships much lighter, as well as making them much more fuel efficient. The overarching plan made by Elon Musk is just as grand, which is building a self-sustaining community on Mars made up of 1 million individuals. And in order to pull that off, they certainly will need a gigantic ship, which translates to even higher efficiency of their Raptor engines to account for that much increase in mass. As we have seen time and time again, failure is just the gateway towards success and seeing how committed SpaceX has been after their failures before, it might be only a matter of time before we can turn this vision into a reality.